we have um, an early entry ticket or a, I think it's a skip the line type ticket for the Jameson Distillery. So we're going there. We're going to um, have some lunch there. We've had lunch there before and it was really, really good. Very, very good. Really good food. Um, and then we're going to do the tour. So we'll and I might have to sample a little bit of Jameson. Of course we're going to sample it. <laughs> so we'll catch up with you there. To the bartenders explaining all the different whiskeys to Mark. He's doing a tasting. I'm just having a hot whiskey. I think I'm going to go this direction. You're going to go from Jameson down past me and then finish yeah. with the Crested? Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And are you going to leave just the last? Or? Yes, I will. Oh, yeah. Now, which this one? This is the Jameson original. The Jameson original. That's good. Very, very Be good nice. for a cold. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm doing with this one. I don't have a cold. I just like it. Yeah, so the gem okay. original goes in here with some spice tea. In the spice tea syrup, we use licorice, we use cloves, grated nutmeg, and cinnamon. And then we pour boiling water on top, let that stew for a while. And then we add sugar in on top of that, give it a stir, and then strain it off. And that kind of, rather than cloving lemons, it's going to add value to the drink. That it is so good. I could get in trouble with this. <laughs> I mean that goes down real easy, especially oh, if it's cold outside. Talk about tailgate drink. Yeah. Like the best tailgate drink. <laughs> oh, You're good. to smell with your mouth open. Uh, it doesn't matter. That smells really good. He taught us to smell with our mouth open, which feels weird, but yeah. you really do smell it better. It's, it smells delicious. Yeah, this one. I'm gonna taste on some before, Mark. <laughs> That's pretty good stuff. And you have to swish it around so that it gets on all the taste buds of your tongue because different areas of your tongue taste different parts of the... It activates different taste buds. It activates different taste buds. The house whiskey. Okay. So this is... This is the house. Does that mean you can only get it here? You can only buy it here. So you can't buy this bottled in the United States. You have to come to Dublin to the Jameson to Distillery to get this one. It's really smooth, but at the end of it has a little bit of an oak flavor. To it. You, don't, you don't like that? No, no, it's fine. I'm just saying it's a very, that's very complicated. It's a blend uh, between two of these whiskeys, and so the flavor is very complex. I think it's safe to say this has been Mark's favorite part of this trip so far. <laughs> Beats working. Beats working any day. <laughs> like going back to chemistry lab in high school. <laughs> yeah, this is good chemistry. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a little bit about how whiskey is made. And whiskey making is a combination of art and science.
we did the tour at uh, Jameson. It was really good. It only took about an hour, but it's very, very hands-on. And then the best part is at the end you get a whiskey tasting. Yes. And you get um, you get to try three different ones. One, of course, is the Jameson. And then for comparison, they give you one from the best seller in Scotland. And then you get the best seller in America, which is Jack, Jack Daniels. Daniels and you get to compare them. I have to tell you, the Jameson was by far the best. <laughs> See, Mark's laughing at the birds. He's standing on top of the uh, the head of the uh, statue. So anyway, um, it, was, it was definitely one of the better distillery slash brewery tours that, uh, that we've done. I think I actually enjoyed that better than the Guinness tour that we did last yeah, time. They really but they're different. related well they related the story. They told you the whole story of the founding about the family. Yeah, you get the history, you then really you got get into it. Then you get a whole demonstration that's very hands on where you get to smell and touch the ingredients. Um, so they tell you they get into the making of it. And then um, the final room, like I said, is the tasting. And she even, they even teach you how to properly taste it and all of that kind of thing. For instance, did you know when you smell a liquor or beer or wine or whatever, you're supposed to do it with your mouth open. Even though it looks silly, you get a much better aroma, a full ro aroma that way. So it was interesting. and. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Now we're headed back to our hotel and I'm super excited for tonight because we're going to what they call an Irish house party. Um, it's at a hotel, the restaurant in a hotel I believe. Um, we're going to get dinner, drinks, music, live entertainment, dancing, all kinds of stuff. So, a great um, time will be had by all. It sounds like a great time will be had by all. And it sounds like um, it's traditional, what they call trad music, which is traditional Irish music. One of the things I love about Dublin is all of the different colored doors. You see everything, and I mean everything. We've seen pink, purple, bright green, and then we've seen some of the more traditional colors like we just see red here. But the story of the doors, there's two stories about the colors of the doors. Um, one story, and the, the true story, is that um, when Ireland was still under British rule, they ordered all the doors to be painted black. And I think it was for the death of, of one of the rulers. And um, in rebellion, they all chose crazy colors and painted them crazy colors. Oh, and here's a pretty green one. There's a real pretty green one over there. That's actually a pretty one. I've seen ones that are more <laughs> glow in the dark. Here, well, no, that's still a pretty green and a pretty blue. Um, but the local lore, waiting for that tram to go by. The local lore is that um, they're all painted different colors so that the men can find their own door after a night at the pub. I prefer that story. I think that one's it's probably more realistic. It's probably more realistic and it's a lot more fun. But uh, in any case, they're all, it's just really, it really gives um, character to the city. So we're here at the Lansdowne Hotel for the Irish House Party. It's really cute. and. They invited us to wait in the bar. What did you get? The Guinness stew? Yep, the stew. Beef and Guinness stew. I got the beef stuffed chicken.
the dinner show it was called an Irish house party um, so we thought we'd review it for you just a little bit um, the food was good wasn't anything gourmet it was hearty and filling there was there was more than enough for me to get full did you get full I got full it was tasty yeah. uh, but it wasn't anything special as far as uh, food in, in uh, Dublin goes. But you don't go, we didn't do it for the no, food, the we did it for the, the show. And um, the show was traditional music with traditional instruments. They taught you a little bit about the instruments, um, sang all different types of traditional Irish songs. And um, the, I can't remember that weird instrument. <laughs> that was called the, but, the elin pipes the, which okay. is the elbow pipes and matthew yeah and it looked really hard and matthew is a, a uh, champion on those and then um kira used to dance with river dance so she was really really good i was not expecting that level of no, um, the, the, the entertainment was first rate. There's no yeah. question about it. That that was worth every penny right there. Yeah, it was a good night. So, um, this is the end of our day together here in Dublin. Mark has to go back to work Thursday and Friday. <laughs> but then Saturday, we're going to rent a car, leave Dublin, and we're just going to go on a road trip for about a week. So make sure if you haven't already subscribed that you subscribe down below and make sure to also give us a thumbs up. Good night from Dublin. Bye. One, two, three.